In today's video, I drove down to the capital of Texas to play on the world famous Lodge livestream. I'll be playing 5, 10, 25, match the stack against some of the biggest action players in all of Texas. There's even a special guest who's traveled all the way from across the pond. In the very last hand of the night, we play a $20,000 pot against him. You don't want to miss this. Wolfgang in the blender here. No pair, just ace high. From the Lodge Mahal in beautiful Austin, Texas. Welcome to the Lodge Livestream. My name is Slick Rick. We'll go around the table in a minute, but welcome everyone. It's going to be a fun one. There he is, folks. Wolfgang Poker from YouTube fame. They don't even let Wolfgang sit down and they tell him we're starting the knit game. All right, we're back at the lodge for our fourth ever live stream session. The last three went pretty great. Not gonna lie, I'm up $30,000 at the lodge live. We are back here into the fourth session. I have six grand in my stack. I bought in for two, topped up for four. It's matched the stack. And believe me, by the end of the session, we're gonna be in for around $30,000. So yeah, first hand here, we look down at pocket queens. Queens now for Wolfgang. And I come in for a three bet from the button. The knit game is on, we're playing it for $50 a head, so uh, pretty hefty here. Luckily I do in fact pick up a great hand and Stash is gonna call from the hijack and flop himself the world. Couple clubs for Stash. An outstanding flop and, and an ace. I have second pair and no backdoor flush ideas. When he checks it over to me, I think it's a decent board to go for a c-bet on. That's what I decide to do. And let's see if he goes for a check raise or just a check call. He just puts in the call, bringing us off to the turn, which is a disaster. Keep it on that button, man. There's the queen, oh and it's goodness. a club. Wow. Oh, my five. goodness. All right, it was a five. Queen of clubs giving the set for Wolfgang. Not drawing dead. It's going to need the board to pair. Slick Rick and Skull Mike said it best. What a turn card. We turn ourselves a set, and he turns himself the nut flush. Of course, one out of every five times, the board is going to pair, and I'm going to scoop this. When he checks it to me, I think I want to continue betting. Get value from hands like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-10. Maybe a hand like king-queen or king-10 as well with a club in it. So yeah, I decide to go for a bet of $1,150 into the $1,400 pot, trying to exercise maximum pressure and uh, just build the pot if I am ahead. If I would have gone smaller, I definitely think Stash would go for a check raise here and just try to get it in. However, when I went large, he probably thinks I'm going to continue betting on the river, and he just puts in the call Bringing us off to another disgusting card. It comes the king of hearts. Any jack now has a straight. Surprisingly, Stash checks it over to me with the nuts. The risk with that is I could just check behind. And I think a lot of players in this spot with a set would check behind. Any jack beats them and any two clubs beat them. However, let's think about his entire range here when he raises from the hijack and calls a three bet. He's going to have hands like pocket tens and eights. He's also going to have ace ten ace queen and ace king so i still think there's a few hands to get value from sure it could be very very thin and he could call me with better like exactly his hand ace three of clubs but uh, i decided to go for a small thin value bet here of a thousand dollars actions back over to stash and i'm not going to bore you guys here he just rips it all in and i find the good fold i can't be bet calling here when he shoves on the river it's never a bluff and i get away from this one but we lose a few thousand dollars in the process not off to the best start. And number two of the vlog, we open it up with Efan just ripping it all in with his knit button for around $1,100. Queen 10 offsuit, a pretty uh, speculative hand. So if anyone picks up a good one here, they're uh, due to win a nice chunk of change. Folds all the way around to Bulldog who folds King 9 suited, a little strange there. And what's that? I am in the $50 straddle and I still have my knit button. It's $50 a person. I can't be folding, but I just have three deuce of hearts. If you get invited to these games, you got to put in some action. So I put in the call for $1,100. Uh, granted, it will be around four or $500 if I lose the knit game. So it's around double that. Got to gamble here, and we're going off to a flop. 60-40 dog. The flop all but seals our fate. We're going to need running cards to win this. We get one of those on the turn. Ifan says if it's a heart on the turn, he's definitely dead. That's not what it is, though. It's a pair of threes followed by a brick on the river. We're losing that $2,200 pot. Man, we can't catch any cards today. Let's top back up and improve our session here with ace three of spades from the dealer button. We see an open from Jared, and surprisingly, I decide just to call here with a suited wheel. I probably should be three betting to like 225 to 275, but instead I just call. That brings in Ifan as well. We're going three ways to a flop, which smashes my calling range on a 6-4 deuce board, and Ifan checks it over to Jared. 
He goes for a C bet into two opponents. Don't really love it with a pair. He probably should just check here. But uh, then again, he might have his own strategy. I think in my spot, calling and raising are both fine. And I get pretty aggressive here and go for a raise to 275. I can obviously represent a hand like 3-5 suited if I'm playing ace 3 suited as just a call. I'm also going to have pocket 4s, deuces, and 6s. Those uh, would elect to probably call 75 pre instead of 3 betting. So yeah, this raise makes a lot of sense. Puts a lot of pressure on a better hand like Jared. Uh, but he's a good player from Toledo. I've played out with him at the reserve. And he puts in the call off to the turn we go, which brings in the 7 of hearts, giving him a flush draw as well. When he checks it over to me for a second time, if I had a straight or a set, I would be betting large here, somewhere around five to $600. What do I decide to go into the $800 pot? Exactly 500, perfect bet sizing for me. Unfortunately though, Jared picked up the flush draw, so he can't get away just yet. That'd be pretty nitty, and he puts in the call. The river is a brick, and Jared checks it over to me for a third time. Now it seems pretty easy just looking at the graphics right now to say, Wolfgang, go for a bet. Go for a bluff here of around 1,000 to 1,500 and easily get his pair of fours to fold. However, what is he really calling me with on the flop check raise and then on the turn as well? He might have a hand like a6, maybe 6-7 that uh, turn two pair. So it's not a slam dunk uh, bet here from my spot, but I'm not going to give up that easily. I need to win a hand here. It's already hand number 42 of the session, and I don't think I've won one yet. I bet out for $1,400, which all but gets the job done. Going to lay it down. Good bet by Wolfgang here. Jared mucks his cards. He thinks about it for a little while, giving me a sweat. But luckily for me, he finds the fold, bringing us into the next one. All right, this next hand, we are going incognito mode. And you can't see anyone's cards but myself. Kind of puts you in my shoes in the moment. Let's play some 5, 10, 25 together. Ifan opens up the cutoff to 125. Jared three bets the small blind. Pretty standard stuff so far. Stash decides to come in for a cold call for 515 more. Actions on me, we have King Jack suited. Weird spot here, it's a definitely a great hand. Are we four betting with King Jack suited somewhere around 1500 to two grand, or are we just putting in the call? What would you guys do in this spot? Well, that's why I covered up the opponent's cards. You don't know what they have. I decided just to put in the call. It seemed a little bit gnarly to put in 1500 to two grand with King Jack suited. That brings in Efen as well. I don't think going four ways to the flop with King Jack suited is optimal, but we flop ourselves a flush draw on a 4-3-3 board. Going to be pretty unlikely that anyone has a three in their hand unless it's ace three suited. That's pretty much about it. Maybe some pocket fours. Other than that, we are drawing pretty live in the spot. Jared was the pre-flop three better. Let's see what he decides to do on this low board. And he bets out for $750. He's still going to have some ace-king, ace-queen combos, but he's also going to have a lot of over pairs to this board, like nines, tens, jacks, all that good stuff. I do have the knit button, and Jared does as well, so I could consider his bet here a little bit lighter than usual, although he is betting into three other opponents, and that's not usually a bluff. I decide to put in the call for $750. I want to spike a jack, king, or heart on the turn. Efan puts in the call as well. That is worrisome. He's definitely capable of having fours or a three X in his hand. We're going off to the turn now in a very large pot already. The turn comes the queen of clubs. Now, uh, does that favor Jared or Efan? I definitely think Jared is more likely to have a hand like queen jack, king queen, or ace queen. So when he just rips it all in for 3480, Definitely know I'm behind. Obviously, I have king high. He's going to have that ace, queen, king, queen, maybe kings and aces as well that would want to continue to shove on this river. However, Efan is behind us. He could easily have a three. If Jared shoves, I call, and Efan puts in the call with a three, are my nine heart outs on the river good enough and giving me a good enough price to put in the call here? Another thing we need to consider is that if I fold, I immediately lose the knit game. And I think we were playing it for $100 a pop this time. So that's $800, and uh, that would not feel very good. After a little bit of deliberation, I know I'm behind, and it's probably not the best call in the long run to call with only nine outs on a paired board going for a flush. Doesn't seem like a great recipe for success, but I decide to put in the call. Let's see if we can get lucky on the river, and we actually have a few more outs than we thought. We also have the king of spades, king of clubs, and king of diamonds, so giving me a little bit of a better chance. We're going to run it one time, and one time it comes the four of clubs. Jared has taken down that 11.3k pot, and to make matters worse, we also have to pay out the knit game. GG's. I reach into the bag and top up once again. I have 11.3k in my stack. I look down at king-queen offsuit and raise it up to $350. 
$100 straddle was on at this point. Efen in the big blind puts in the call for $10 more. Brian is in the $25 blind here and puts in the call. Chariot in the 50 puts in the call as well. And the $100 straddle stash gets out of the way with Jack Deuce off. Going off four ways to a flop here, $1,500 in the middle. And it's pretty good for us. It comes king 5-4 with two hearts. And I expect the action to check over to me considering I was the pre-flop raiser. However, Brian has evil intentions and just bets out for 475. We can't see his cards. Uh, we're playing along with me here, a little bit of deception. What do you think he has here? You could have 6-7 as bluffs. He'd also have some heart draws. Could he have a hand like king 10 and he just wants to get value here and protect against some heart draws? Sure, that makes some sense. And other strong hands are pocket fives and pocket fours. When Jared puts in the call, that's kind of interesting. I'm putting him on a weak king or a flush draw. I put in the call as well. Ifan, out of the way, off to the turn we go, which comes the seven of spades. When Brian continues to bet, he's telling a good story. A lot of his bluffs would just check on the turn when he gets called in two spots. So when he continues betting, it's definitely a king, a set, or maybe some nut flush draws, and that's kind of about it. Jared's a good player and he understands this logic from Brian. So when he puts in the call, he has to have a decent hand, probably a king, a nut flush draw. I think sets would raise in this spot. When the action's back over to me, am I going to go for a raise now? Kind of seems a little bit like an overplay. I decide just to put in the call. I'm still beating some random king X. Raising opens the door for Brian or Jerry just to rip it in with a set or two pair. So yeah, I put in the call, hoping to not see a heart on the river, which doesn't come. The five of diamonds, a welcome sight. And even better than that is that Brian and Jared both check it over to me. I probably should go for thin value in the spot. Brian or Jared could easily have a king. One of them probably has a flush draw. And I decide to bet out for $3,500. Okay, let's expose Brian's hand. He has ace jack offsuit with a jack of heart. How did he arrive in the spot? Donking the flop and betting the turn, I definitely would have expected to see at least like a heart flush draw. The jack of hearts in his hand is not good as well because that blocks some missed flushes that I would have. He has a pretty easy fold but goes into the tank for a while. Just not believing me, thinking his ace high might be good. He folds, actions on Jared, who has the nut flush draw. There it is, a credible hand. And unfortunately, I didn't raise on the turn because it looks like I would have got Brian to fold. Jared probably would have put it in there with the uh, nut flush draw, and we could have got a little bit more value. Wolf King finally gets rid of his knit button. We're going to take down that $8,800 pot, finally winning a nice one. All right, let's keep it moving. Hand number 77 of the night. I raise it up from the plus one with Queen Jack offsuit. $50 straddle was obviously on for me to raise it to $150. Bulldog has a mystery hand here from the $50 straddle, puts in the call. We're going off to a flop. You can see we're both playing extremely deep. A lot of the money in front of me, though, I have uh, added on from my bag. So, yeah, we're going to go off to a flop, which comes ace, five, four, rainbow. Pretty good board for my range from the plus one. So when he checks over to me, I go for a c-bet of 100 to which he snap calls. Turn now pairs the board coming the ace of hearts. I could be betting or checking in this spot. I like to go for a bet, trying to make it look like I'm getting value from any five or four in his hand. If I had a hand like ace, 10, ace, jack, that's what I would decide to do in this spot. So we're going to do that with queen, jack, offsuit, 250, and we get called once again. That's not very good. He easily could have a random a6, a7, a8 in his hand. I think all of the better aces would have gone for a three bet pre. He puts in the call, bringing us off to the river, which comes the king of clubs. Definitely a good card for me. I could have pocket kings as well. So when he checks it over for a third time, I'm going to polarize here and bet out for the size of the pot. What hands would I do this with for value? That would be all my ace-x combos. And I'd also do that with pocket kings. The hands that have bluffs here would be hands like 6-7. And then hands like queen-jack, queen-10, all that good stuff. He doesn't love this spot. Let's expose what he has. Ace-8 offsuit? How is this putting him in a weird spot? I feel like this is top of range. He has to put in the call with three of a kind. Even Skull Mike agrees he's either calling or raising. Thinking about flatting or raising. Until he doesn't. Sometimes in poker, the opponents just put you on a better hand. Plus one position and my range is probably going to be pretty tight. I don't hate the fold, obviously, because I'm taking down the pot. But I'm definitely interested to hear from Bulldog 
what kind of hand he put me on to fold three of a kind. Nice fold, sir. Wow. He got, got snaps it. Uh. <laughs> Bulldog, I never thought a fold was what he was debating there, giving Wolfgang credit for a boat or a larger ace. $50 straddle has been put on by yours truly in this spot. T100 raises the cutoff to $250. I decided to defend with ace three offsuit, probably not the best play in the long run, but I'm trying to V-pip here and get in there with some spicy hands. And let me tell you, this hand is a funny one. King three deuce is the flop. I start with a check. Pair is hard to make, so when he goes for a C-bet, I decide to put in the call. We're off to the turn, which comes the seven of diamonds. The turn goes check, check. I don't really think he's gonna have a king in this spot now. So he has ace queen, maybe queen jack, ace queen, ace jack, all of that stuff. And the river comes the nine of spades. I have a pair, so I'm not really trying to bet to get those hands to fold. Maybe he also has a hand like pocket five, sixes, eights, tens, that wanted to check back on the turn given the fact there was a king out there. So yeah, I decided to go for a polarizing bet here into the $1,000 pot. I overbet it for $1,100. Like I said a few moments ago, I'm trying to get all of his better pocket pairs to fold, those that would be scared of a king. I like my bet sizing to accomplish that. Exposing what cards he has, ace jack of spades. Now it looks like my hand has turned into a value bet, right? Because uh, ace jack, I already had beat with a pair of threes. You can see I have the check mark. Don't really know what he's thinking about in this spot. Maybe he thinks I have some busted diamond draws. Maybe a hand like five six of diamonds or four five of diamonds. He also could beat hands like queen jack and queen ten. Maybe if I had queen ten of clubs, I'd try to pick up something on the flop and float them. At the end of the day, this is one of the most interesting hands that I have played on the Lodge live stream. T1000 convinces himself that his ace jack high is good. I turn over my cards thinking there's no way I'm good in this spot. And he says, nice bet. We are going to get rewarded with that $3,200 pot. Kind of look like a genius with my octo crab here, 8-3 off. And uh, my bluff turned into a value bet, got called, and we're making the maximum with ace three offsuit. Let's freaking go. Jared raises it up to 150 with ace king offsuit from the hijack. I find myself in the small blind. A pretty easy three bet in my shoes with ace queen offsuit. Uh, I make it $600 to go. Jared could be four betting. I think that's probably the preferred route, but instead he puts in the call underplaying his hand. And we're off to a flop, which comes seven, seven, four. We're gonna have a lot of over pairs and ace king high and a lot of good stuff here. So into the $1,300 pot comes a C bet of around one third. Jared decides to float me. I don't hate him for this because uh, he's underplayed his hand and he's gonna be beating a lot of king queen suited, king jack, king 10, all of that good stuff. We're off to the turn which comes the nine of diamonds. If I had any over pairs or hands like seven, eight or seven, six, I'd continue betting here on the turn for a large sizing. And that's what I decided to do. It's not a large sizing, but continuing to bet tells a good story. Now I think Jared has a pretty clear fold. There's not many hands that I'd continue betting on this turn. I'm not always going to be doing this with ace queen. I just must have had a read on Jared that he was a little bit weak and wanted to continue applying pressure. What's that though? Jared is not going to fold. He's going to continue for 1100. A little bit of disrespect there from Jared thinking that he has me beat and that I'm betting the turn light. So of course, he gets rewarded on the river with the king of diamonds. I say rewarded, but a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Wolfgang, he had the best hand the whole time. Well, uh, he's going to get rewarded in this spot because as you see, I am going to use this king of diamonds to try to get him to fold a hand like pocket sixes, pocket tens, pocket jacks that decided to not four bet preflop. There are going to be a lot of those types of hands in his range, so I love using this king of diamonds as a scare card to try to get him off this $4,300 pot. But of course, when I bet a large sizing of 2700 he snap calls, and a 10 k pot is going over his way just when we were about unstuck. We're going to have to top back off, reach back into the bag. Losing that 10 k one does not feel pretty good. All right, this is officially the last hand of the night, hand number 132, and it's the most exciting one by far. If you guys have made it this far, be sure to hit that like button, and also if you're new, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button as well. A lot more cool content coming your way. All right, the $100 straddle was on for pretty much the last few orbits, and now because it's the last hand, the 200 straddle gets on. We are playing 100-200 at the lodge. Stash raises it up to $500. Bulldog comes in for a three bet to $1,800. And what do I have? Oh no, ace, queen, offsuit. I say oh no, because this pot is gonna get absurdly large very quickly. 
I don't think calling a three bet with ace queen off is a good play out of position. I am in the straddle spot, so I don't want to incentivize anyone else just to put in 1800. We're going to go like three or four ways to a flop. That means I have to four bet, and a good four betting size here I determine is $4,000 to go. Yes, we are putting in $4,000 in pre flop and still have around 13K behind. This is setting up for a big one. When Stash gets out of the way with 5 3, actions on Bulldog, who immediately looks over at my stack. He sees that I have a good amount of playability behind, and he decides to toss in the call, bring us off to the flop, which comes king 8-4 with two hearts, and he checks it over to myself. Now, if we were just playing 1-2 at the lodge, I would definitely go for a c-bet on this board, so I can't let the money and the stakes get to me. King 8-4 is a great board to continue betting my range on, and that's what I decided to do to the tune of $3,000, and we're going to get snap called by Bulldog. Snap calls usually are a sign of a draw or a weak top pair in my opinion. Some draws he might have here would be 5-6 suited, maybe he has some heart ideas, maybe he has a hand like pocket 10s, pocket 9s that want to continue for one street. Either way, we're going to see an interesting card on the turn which comes with 10 of spades. Does this bring in anything? Well, pocket 10s now has a set and is going nowhere. King 10 has two pair. Uh, yeah, he checks it over to me. I think I like a check back in the spot. Can't really be bluffing for any other sizing other than a jam all in. And considering I have ace queen high, I'm still going to beat some hands, maybe like seven, nine, or five, six. So I'll check back here on the turn and maybe pick off some bluffs on the river. The river comes an atrocious one. It's the six of hearts. However, if Bulldog checks it over to me for a third time, I probably could use the ace of hearts in my hand as a good bluff candidate and rip it all in for 9,600 into the 14.8K pot. Instead, that option has been ripped out of our hands when Bulldog just jams all in for my $9,600 effective. The 47.20 that the graphics say are incorrect. Bulldog said all in, and the action's on me for a $9,600 call off. Are there any hands that we beat in this spot? I mean, I can't really think of many. It's just a bummer because I was going to use that six of hearts as a good bluff card and try to get him to fold a one pair type of hand. Instead, we are finding ourselves in a $20,000 pot. It would be a $30,000 pot if I put in the call, but I didn't come all this way down to Austin to punt off another 10K on the last hand of the night. So after a little bit of deliberation, okay, maybe a lot of bit, I just don't want to relinquish this one. $20,000 in the middle is absolutely massive. And uh, yeah, I decide to fold my ace high and we can see that Bulldog got lucky with King 10 suited. It's a great hand. I don't blame him for calling preflop, but just one time in 100, 200 on the last hand of the night, maybe just have it come queen high or ace high or something like that. Why does he have to flop a top pair, call a bet, make two pair? Luckily, I didn't put any more money in on the turn because he obviously was going nowhere. That's going to cap off our night. 132 hands of poker here in Austin, Texas. And uh, it did not go too well for myself. All right, that wraps up the stream. We ended up losing 17.3K. And uh, ironically enough, the big hand there right at the end is playing back here on the TV. A little needle insult to injury. But we got in for 27, out for around 10. My second or third biggest loss on the channel, 17.3K. Definitely doesn't feel very good. But as a poker player, when you win really big, can't get too excited and spend all that money on frivolous things. And when you lose big, can't beat yourself up if you didn't do too many stupid things. Uh, the hand that got me the most amount of trouble was that ace-queen hand. I also got into trouble with another ace-queen hand against uh, the buddy with the ace-king there who made a light call on the turn and got there on the river. I tried to represent the king and that didn't work out so well for me. But yeah, definitely stings a little bit. The uh, 17K that's not in my possession anymore. I distributed around the table, hopefully, that gets me a free pass to come back here to Lodge whenever I want. But as for now, we have uh, a three hour drive that we get rewarded with. So we lose 17 grand, got to drive three hours back to Dallas. That's how it goes. I don't really feel like entering the uh, turbo tournament main event uh, that they have going on here right now. But thanks for all the support, you guys. If you guys have any words of encouragement, let me know down below. We're family here on the channel and I uh, definitely want to hear from you guys as well. You ride with me for the highs. You also got to ride with me for the lows. I didn't think I played too bad tonight, but we're going to bounce back. I think I'm going to come back here next week and play once or twice for the next few weeks. But that's enough babbling for now. I just wanted to show you guys my raw motion here at the lodge. I love this place. Probably one of my favorite places to play on a live stream. 
in the United States. So definitely we'll be coming back here. If you want to uh, get better at poker, there's some links down below. Uh, I might have to click on those as well and uh, get in there and learn some stuff after today's session. Good luck on the felt, you guys. I hope you run better than I did tonight. But as for now, I'll catch you in that next video. Peace.